So Lauren saw this guy, Chris Collins, on TikTok make a steak pie under sliced potatoes, and she asked me to make that. So without looking at Chris's recipe in detail, here is my interpretation of that basic concept. If you're going to call it a steak pie and not just a beef pie, I think that means the beef should be steak. That is a tender muscle cut against the grain. I'm using filet, some relatively cheap off cuts of tenderloin, two pounds here at the most, not even a kilo. And I want to cut these first against the grain of the meat. See, I'm cutting perpendicular to the muscle fibers, and then I'll cut these pieces just in half. If we're calling it a steak pie, I want the pieces inside to be somewhat recognizable as steaks and that means wide and flat. Enough salt and pepper for all the surfaces, and then I will also toss in some cornstarch. Flour would work. I just like how a starch coating on meat helps it merge with the surrounding sauce. Time to brown in a little very hot oil. I'm definitely on the edge of crowding the pan, where you put in so much meat that the pan can't stay hot enough to brown it. But no, we're okay, just barely. Flip all these pieces around, and I'm just trying to brown these quickly without cooking the inside too much. I want the inside to stay pink. Everybody out into the baking dish. Vegetables. This is a relatively quick cooking pie, so I need to slice these carrots extra thin to make sure they get softened in time. In they go to the pan. Might need some more oil to get them going. A couple celery stalks because I have them. In they go. And today for my onion, I've got a bunch of green onions because they go great with potatoes. Slice the whites thin and throw them in. Reserve the greens for garnish. I'm worried that the fond at the bottom of the pan is going to burn, so I need to move on and brown a little tomato paste in there for flavor and then deglaze with white wine. Yes, you can make beef in white wine instead of red, and if you use white, I find you can use a lot more of it. I'm using solid wine for my liquid today, and now I can just take a pause and let these carrots soften. There was no need to risk burning the brown stuff in the pan before because we can always just give the veggies some extra cook time right now. Just chill out and maybe sip some coffee from Trade Coffee, sponsor of this video. Trade's coffee discovery service is the perfect gift for yourself or others. Go to drinktrade.com slash ragusia, buy a digital gift subscription, and all you have to decide is how much you want to spend, the number of bags your giftee will receive. They get the gift in their inbox with your personal message, and then they take the trade quiz. They tell Trade what kind of coffee they like, and then Trade will start shipping them red bags, sent directly by the cool local independent roaster who roasted it within 48 hours of shipping. Trade doesn't make coffee. They just find excellent coffees from across the United States and send you bags you'll love. I just love the element of surprise and discovery. A digital trade coffee subscription is the perfect last minute gift, perhaps for yourself. Get a free bag of roasted to order coffee with any subscription purchase when you use my link in the description, drinktrade.com slash ragusia. Thank you, Trade. All right, I'm using three thickeners today. A couple of packets of unflavored gelatin bloomed in cool water. Not necessary, but it'll make up for the lack of collagen in our tender beef, and it'll make the sauce stickier and glossier. And I'm going to do some cornstarch slurry, a random amount dispersed in cool water or wine. If this liquid is hot, it clumps. The goal now is to make enough thick, flavorful sauce to submerge that much meat. I think we can eyeball that. Then goes my starch slurry. It thickens immediately at a simmer. Get that really thick. More wine in, but you could use water. And then I generally look for some kind of umami boost. In a French restaurant, they'd use demi-glace. You could use some soy sauce or a stock cube. Not an ad. I've used better than bouillon for years, and it's a damn good cheat. Just remember that it's like solid salt, so plan on this being the remaining salt in the recipe. Give it a taste. I think we need lots of pepper and a little sweetener. Molasses will make it taste vaguely barbecue-ish. At the last minute, I'll melt in the gelatin. It does thicken a little bit more if you cook it less. And if I need to, I'll reduce this a little more just to get it really thick. I want a solid pie. For the potato layer, I'm going to want several cloves of garlic chopped up, and then I've got a pound, half a kilo of potatoes, Yukon gold, but any potato will do, sliced as thin as you can get. Get a V-slicer if you want, but I only have two potatoes to get through, so I'm happy going slow. Here is the real-time pace. Walk, don't run, right? 
Okay, we're ready to enrobe our mini steaks in sauce. And since I'm feeling luxurious, I will stir in an egg yolk. It'll taste good and give the filling an almost custardy set texture that I like for a pie. I hate savory pies that are like watery stew with crust on top. Lay on one layer of potatoes and then I will top it with some garlic, pepper, a tiny pinch of salt because it's so thin, and then you can just brush on some oil, but I want a potato gratin vibe, which means some cheese. This is Gouda, and then a little splash of cream. Hell yeah. Lay in my second layer, top with garlic, pepper, salt, cheese, and then I'll pour on some cream, but do not flood the dish. Lots of water is going to come out of the potatoes, just a little cream on top. Covering with the lid part of the way definitely cooks the potatoes through a little bit better. I'm just doing 350 Fahrenheit 180C for about 45 minutes covered, then I'll uncover and give it another 45 minutes or so to brown the top. Because we're using tender beef, the dish is done whenever the potatoes are done to your liking. We don't need to worry about softening the meat. It's okay if it's a little jiggly when you take it out. It's going to firm up as it cools. I can slice those green onion tops for garnish. Classic on potatoes. That gratinated top looks beautiful on top. Does not look super beautiful inside, but good lord does it taste comforting. And because we use tender beef cut against the grain, we can just push our fork through those beef pieces and there's still even a little pink inside. Yet another dish that would make a very easy yet fancy alternative holiday feast. Think about it.